Hello and welcome to the next Q's Views RPG video. Now it's been a little bit, so I do apologize for the hiatus. However, we are back and we have the Dungeons and Dragons Monster Manual 3 as we continue the Monster Book series. So Monster Manual 3 is for 4th edition Dungeons and Dragons. Now, as per usual, we will not be covering every single monster that there is in the book. But we will skim through this and we will talk about the monsters that either I used or thought about using and didn't. Or monsters that I didn't really care to use but used anyways. And to find out your thoughts on these various creatures. And as usual, we'll go ahead and zoom in so that way you can see the illustrators, some of the credits of those who put their hard work into this book. And here we have the table of contents for the book. And we'll be starting with the Abyssal Hulk and ending with the Yawn T. Monsters A to Z. And of course we have a lovely piece of artwork here, which is pretty standard for Dungeons and Dragons. I'll just read this first intro part. You can never have enough monsters in a Dungeons and Dragons campaign. With more than 300 new creatures contained within its pages, Monster Manual 3 features a fiendish array of clever tricksters, hulking brutes, and diabolical villains to vex player characters. From the treacherous Jackalware to the insane Dero, a number of classic Dungeons and Dragons monsters join 4th edition with the arrival of this book. Pretty cool. Stat block and other pertinent information tons of information and the definitions of what they mean when applied to monsters of course we have apes great apes apocalypse spell god slayer inferno And again, the artwork is top-notch. Just, just beautiful artwork. The Bander Hob, I've never used this creature in a campaign. I have used the Behemoth, which is basically a dinosaur. Have you used those things before? Of course, Beholders. Beholders are just classic Dungeons and Dragons. Doesn't get really too much more classic than that. Cambions are a classic creature. And one of the creepiest pictures I've ever seen of the cattle blippus. Now, I have used this monster, and I'm telling you right now, <laughs> no party in their right mind wants to meet up with one of these. But they don't have to. <laughs> Just fantastic. Beautiful artwork. Cave fishers are another classic creatures. Another excellent piece of artwork. Just for me, the artwork in this book is just top notch. I mean, it usually is, but I actually personally like the details of the artwork in this book in comparison to some of the previous ones overall. Have you used the crowd before or is this something you have not used? Dark ones. We're getting to some of the demons. Very cool demon artwork. All kinds of crazy and interesting things going on in the demon realms. And this artwork that illustrates these fantastic creatures. The closet. The ultra demon. Fantastic artwork for the Darrow. Now we get into devils. Demons and devils will always be a classic part of Dungeons and Dragons or any fantasy style role playing game. Devil Hell Wasp. I always thought those things were really cool looking. And now we're getting into the dragons. Dungeons and Dragons without dragons, imagine that. 
wouldn't really be Dungeons and Dragons anymore, would it? Earthquake dragons, volcanic dragons. Just such a great way to illustrate dragons and to bring new types of dragons into the game. I think it was all done quite well. Of course, we have our drow elementals. I love this art depiction of the various elementals kind of coming together. Although, although we know that wouldn't really take place. You wouldn't really see all four of them tacking together like that. You would have some definitely negating out the other ones, potentially. Forsaken. Foul spawn, which are cool. Frogs are cool. And that's a fantastic piece of artwork. I like how the, the toxic mushrooms are growing on the back. Gargoyles, another example of a classic creature. Ghouls are classic. Fire giants. <laughs> I remember once I was in a campaign and we had the frost giant. And there was a buddy of mine who thought that he could DM as well as me and a buddy of mine. He's like, well, I want to be the dungeon master. You're always the dungeon master. The, Gor the Gorellin, I'm not sure how to pronounce that. I've actually never used this creature. If you have, please let me know in the comments section. Knowles, classic. So my buddy, he's like, hey, well, let me be the DM. I think I could do just as good a job as you guys. We're like, okay, sure, go for it. I said, but the first time I hear or see something out of place that doesn't make sense, I'm going to point it out. And he's like, okay, fine. And so... The party were walking along this ridge, coming around this mountainside, and we encounter a lake. He says, okay, well, you're coming around the, the cliffside, and you come start walking along this rocky ridge, and you notice that this ridge creates basically a natural, uh, natural water leaving. And as you're coming around it, you look down to your right-hand side, you see how it goes around. And on the other side of it, you see this lake, this pristine mountain lake. We're like, oh, that's cool. You know, that's, he's doing pretty good so far. And he's like, now you're coming around this lake. And then all of a sudden, you know, there's a couple things that have taken place, whatnot. We were making our way around. He's like, and then out of nowhere, three fire giants jump out of the lake and attack you. I'm like, what? He says, yeah, they're attacked. Three fire giants. I said, three fire giants just dumped, jumped out of the lake. Is that what you're saying? He says, yep. Go ahead, roll initiative. I'm like, wait a minute. No, it didn't. He says, no, that didn't happen. He says, yes, it did. I'm the DM. I say what goes. I'm like, no, it doesn't work that way. <laughs> just because you're the DM doesn't mean you can pull crap out of your rear and say that's going to stick because it doesn't. Anyway, here's Lolf. Some of you will know what I'm talking about. Pretty cool. I'm glad that they included her in this. I like also that not only did they include her role as the Demon Queen of Spiders, but they also included her aspect, and they also included all the influence that she has over the drow. Which many of us are already aware of. The measles. I never you don't want to get the measles here. <laughs> The measles in real life aren't any good, but in a DM campaign, you don't want these measles either. <laughs> well, back to what I was saying, Mean Lock, that's a classic creature. Yeah, just because you're the DM doesn't mean you can just say anything goes, you know? You can't... Stuff still gotta make sense. Yes, you're in a fantasy world. Yes, there's magic. And who knows? Maybe those giants had some kind of enchantment on them that allowed them... You know, to jump out of water. But number one, I don't buy that. And number two, it just doesn't make sense. You still have to make sense. Things still have to work well in the world. You know, I mean, why fire giants out of the lake? You could have had storm giants jump out of the lake.
He could have made a different giant type. He could have had stone giants come out of the lake. Would have been much more fitting for the campaign. But the fact that he picked fire giants. He could have picked cloud giants. But he uh, picked the perfect antithesis for the elements. And it just it ruins the flow of the campaign. Some of you who are listening to this, if you will know what I'm talking about. Those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, you probably don't have much DM experience. And if you do, you're probably new at being a DM or not. That's a lovely piece of artwork right there for the Ogre Mock. You definitely don't want to encounter an Ogre Mock. I'm telling you that right now. Gargantuan Elemental Humanoid Earth Primordial. Level 34 so, uh, Solo Soldier, 195,000 XP, Initiative plus 24, Perception plus 26, what? <laughs> Just AC 50, Fortitude 48, Reflex 45, Will 47, Speed not the, small, not the quickest, it's only 8, but still it doesn't need to be fast. 1,244 HP, unbloodied. And then we can get into the attacks. We get into the standard actions. But trust me, this is a party destroyer. That's even a prepared party, even a strong party. A really strong party would have a very difficult time against something of that magnitude. Rot grub, that was always one of my favorite things to use, rot grubs. Rot grubs are horrible. Horrible, horrible. Scarecrows, more classics. The Secret of Vecna. Of course, many of us know about the Secret of Vecna. Some of us even know about how a certain somebody was able to steal the hand of Vecna. We won't get into that. But those of you who pay attention to other certain D&D circles will know what I'm talking about. How many of you who've seen that buy that? Or do you think, was it legit? Do you feel it was legit? Or do you think it was kind of a hand me? Kind of a... Kind of a given thing. Shard mind. Skulk. More classic creatures. The slots. Some of my favorite classic creatures. And I think this is the first time we see the golden slot. If someone could. Uh, if you know different on that. There's a place where you've seen the golden slot previously. In other D&D monster publications. Let me know. But I don't remember seeing the golden slot before. Or the putrid slot to be honest. I think this was their first appearance. Spawn of Caius, of course, many of us are familiar with the Sons of Caius, which are also in this particular book. I think the Heralds of Caius and the Wretch are new. Spiders, of course, spiders are always great to use. Star Spawn, that's a pretty cool picture in my opinion. I've never used these in a campaign. Please let me know if you have. Serpents of Nile, pretty cool. Another great piece of artwork all around. Here we have a giant planet filled with a bunch of eyeballs. Alabar is an intelligent and is intelligent and cunning. It tries uh, to fight its own on its own terms. Alabar works to keep its foes close, so that when they inevitably die, it can absorb them into its fleshy bulk. When Alabar is bloodied and senses that its enemies pose a true threat, it sprouts more tentacles and enters into a flurry of attacks. So yeah, it definitely becomes more dangerous as you become a greater threat. Sioux monsters. Tannerook. Have you used these in combat? I have not. They look cool though. Three cranes are a classic creature, and yes, I have used them. Pretty awesome. The Tolgar. Pretty cool looking piece of artwork. I think they did a great job on illustrating that creature. Tolgar half spirits, warriors, and talkers. Spirit talkers. One of my favorite pictures for the Umber Hulk. I think they did a fantastic job on that. The Verbeeg. Don't chop off the dude's head. The Weaver. More cool artwork all the way around. The 
Wilden. The Zavort, which I think are pretty cool looking. I have not used these in a campaign as well. I have wanted to use them. If you have, please let me know in the comment section. And of course, I have indeed used Yetis. I'm sure many of you have, especially if you're using Arctic type terrain, mountainous type terrain, frozen tundras. I'm sure the Yeti would come in fantastic there. Yanti is a classic creature, which I have used many times in campaigns. All the various styles that you have and different uh, applications and iterations that you have. Well, the glossary. It's just a standard monsters by level, which, as we know, for 4th edition, replaced monsters by challenge rating. So the challenge rating, you have monster level which basically is the same thing all right here we go the back of the book guess what's coming to dinner a wide-eyed band of heroes before gaping archway the dark maw of an ancient dungeon filled with treasures yet to be plundered haunting the chambers and corridors of this forlorn obliette are vile monsters the likes of which the heroes have never faced this Dungeons and Dragons core rulebook introduces an innovative monster stat block format that makes running monsters easier for the Dungeon Master. Dungeon Master 3 also presents a horde of iconic monsters that fit easily into any campaign, including new variants of existing monsters such as the Knoll, Warfang, the Ogre Dreadnought, and the Putrid Slod. Updates of popular and iconic monsters from previous editions, including the Cloaker, Nalfishni Demon, the Mimic, the Closet, the Rot Grub, and the Three Cream. Catastrophic Dragons, including the Earthquake Dragon and the Volcanic Dragon. Epic Threats, including Lolth, Demon Queen of Spiders, and Imix, Prince of Elemental Fire, along with Evil Underlings and Cultists. So there you have it. Dungeons & Dragons Monster Manual 3. For fourth edition. Thank you so much for taking the time to take this journey through this book with me. Hopefully you found some creatures that uh, you have used or creatures that you avoided. Creatures maybe you didn't care to use but you ended up using them anyways. Or maybe you found some interesting applications for creatures that you didn't think you would use but managed to work out quite well. Regardless of the situation, let me know your experience with this book if you have used it and the creatures within it in the comment section down below and let's have a fun interesting and uh, cool discussion regarding these topics thank you again for watching stay well stay safe and we'll see you next time take care everyone